So a couple of weeks ago in the midst of yet another Sydney lockdown, I was able to check out a preview build for the upcoming Far Cry 6. Don't know if too many people know this about me, but I'm a pretty big fan of the series in general, so like any red-blooded male with a heartbeat would, I pretty much jumped at the opportunity to check this one out. Bit of a disclaimer before I start though, I wasn't paid to play the game and I'm not being paid to make a video either. This isn't sponsored by Ubisoft or any of that. You don't believe me. I was just lucky enough to get a preview of the game a couple of months ahead of launch, and I thought I'd share my thoughts on what I experienced. What I got to play through was the first couple of hours of the story before jumping ahead a bit into the campaign to check things out with a bit more gear and upgrades. Also, I did have to play this remotely, which means you might see a few delayed responses here and there throughout all of the footage. It's kind of the downside of playing something when you've got a quarter of a second input delay. But even then, what I played here, I gotta be honest, I mostly liked. And there was more than enough zip lining, grappling, wing suitage and carnage on offer. <laughs> Not to mention, it's been such a long time since we've had another entry in the series. Far Cry 6 is being developed by Ubisoft Toronto, who also worked on Far Cry 5, along with working on Watch Dogs Legion. Though, I'm not going to hold that one against them. It takes place on the fictional island of Yara, which is basically Cuba without Ubisoft having to call it that. And funnily enough, Yara is also controlled by a dictator. Anton Costello, played by Giancarlo Esposito, who's just appearing in everything lately. I mean, between this, The Mandalorian, Payday 2, and of course, a little show that no one else has seen called Breaking Bad. Far Cry's long been a series known for having some charismatic antagonists, and if there's one thing that makes a villain memorable, it's charisma. I mean, just take a look at Vast in Far Cry 3 and Pagan Min in Far Cry 4. Awesome. It is a bit distracting seeing this guy pop up in the cinematics though, just considering how recognizable he is, but he definitely lends his presence to the brief cinematics I saw him in, and I look forward to putting a bullet or a crossbow bolt between his eyes. I've caught a very big fish today. Oh shit! The island of Yara is also pretty unique in the way that it's been cut off from the rest of the world for decades, which explains why all of the tech here is so old. People are driving around in crappy cars and you're forced into using hand-me-down weapons like MP40s and M1 rifles. That whole Caribbean setting is one that hasn't really been completely dried out in gaming either. All that really comes to mind is Assassin's Creed 4 and some of the Just Cause games. Not to mention, I think it's actually the first game that we've been back in a tropical setting since Far Cry 3. Yeah. Shit. Far Cry 4 was in the Himalayas, Primal was in Central Europe, and then 5 A New Dawn was set in Montana. And again, like New Dawn, you can choose to play as either a male or a female, with it only really seeming to change your character's appearance and voice during cinematics. But at least there's an actual purpose to that now, compared to New Dawn, where you never saw your character outside of that customization screen. This is a fucking waste of time. Anyway, at the start of the game, there's a revolution, and after trying and failing to escape the country, you wash up on the outskirts of the island and have to join up with a group of aging guerrilla fighters. Come see me when you get settled, my baby tigre. These guys have all been hiding out in the jungle for decades, it seems, getting drunk, smoking doobies, and catching sexually transmitted diseases. And these were not hiding on the mountain while the world goes to shit. But now that you're here, you're gonna help them all unite and bring down Castillo. This involves obviously exploring this huge environment as you complete all of these various main and side missions. Along with single-handedly upgrading that guerrilla camp all by yourself, because despite this whole place absolutely bustling with activity, apparently none of these assholes can go out there and do some goddamn legwork. Getting around the island, you can obviously drive cars, but the vehicles seem to be a lot slower this time around, like you're driving everything in second gear. I noticed too that the enemies chase you down and kill you so quickly when you're in a car that I'm almost convinced it's got to be some kind of throwback to the driving AI in Far Cry 2. Plus it's also got those very unique healing animations when you don't have any medkits. Like one of these has your character pull out a cigar and use it to cauterize a wound. Which might be one of the most badass things I've seen in a game in recent memory. Horses are a new addition, and you can find these things all over the place. Look at my horse, my horse is amazing. There's even hidden guerrilla trails in case you want to stay out of trouble and not draw attention from the military by riding one of these things down the middle of the road. There's also planes and choppers, but annoyingly you can't really fly these things for too long at all, because AA guns at military outposts are going to shoot you down faster than a bad take on Twitter. You can go and track these guns down and destroy them, but that's a bit of a task in and of itself. I guess they've just kind of added these in to force people to use that new trails mechanic. 
I ended up just trying to get as much verticality as possible with either the chopper or the plane before I got shot down. So I could then just use the parachute and the wingsuit to get where I need to go. Thanks for the heads up. Now I think at this point we're really starting to get to the stage where the Far Cry series has done it all before, so you're probably wondering what else they're doing differently. Well they're about for starters how you can wear different pieces of gear on your head, your chest, legs and hands which give different kinds of benefits. Now there's a fair bit of options for the player to consider. I mean wear a gas mask and you don't get affected by toxic or poison attacks. Or wear special gloves on your hands to automatically put out fires and if you've played a Far Cry game in the last decade, well you know how fucking annoying fire can be. A lot like the Just Cause games too, now there's a heat meter and the more carnage you cause, the more military presence starts to appear on the island. There's even times when you can holster your weapon and avoid combat entirely, which is a bit of a nice touch in a series that's mostly just been about putting a bullet through the head of every single person you come across. There's minor new mechanics added in too, like being able to bribe soldiers for information. Que voilà. Okay, check this out. And tripwise, you have to watch out for when moving through the bushes. And bring grappling gear. You're going to need it. I think every game since Primal at this point has also let you have your own companions to help you out along the way, and they've always fit into some kind of niche depending on what approach you wanted to take. When it comes to these animals, we've had saber-toothed tigers and wolves in Far Cry Primal. We've had bears, dogs, and even a goddamn cougar in Far Cry 5, and not the good kind of cougar either. Now in Far Cry 6, there's an alligator, there's a vicious rooster wearing spiked bracelets, and of course, the adorable little dachshund chorizo. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Two of my favorite things in one package, small dogs and cured meats. I mean, what's not to love? Can't even really tell you which one of these is my favorite. Like, they're all so fun to use, it's like trying to pick a favorite child. I mean, let's start with the alligator Guapo, because he's the first one I got in the preview build. See, Guapo is in love with you. For starters, I mean, look, alligators are awesome, but when they're trained to kill on response and also happen to be wearing an alligator-sized shirt, well, then even better. Not to mention the best bit was that Guapo is Spanish for handsome. And yeah, he is. I mean, just look at him. Come on, let's get the fuck out. The next one is the murderous rooster named Chikarone, who even has his own unique quest line where he goes around terrorizing the military and whatever pottery he can get his claws on. He's fucking terrifying. For starters, he wasn't too happy about the army working on experimental attack dogs, so I had to go down there to help him thin out the pack, so to speak. After that, it was off to some military archives to destroy a bunch of files while soldiers poured into the building just begging to be put out of their misery. So at this point, you've got to choose from a vicious alligator that sneaks up on people through the bushes, or a wild screeching rooster that just runs right up to everyone and clucks them to death. Did that sound a bit weird? Then finally there's Chorizo, and I don't think I even need to tell you what makes this guy so amazing. Good boy. I don't actually know how you recruit him, to be honest. I mean, at that point in the game I was playing, he'd already been acquired. But I mean, look, either way, there's worse companions to have at your side than an adorable little puppy dog with squeaky wheels for legs. What's his ability? Well, he's able to literally distract enemies with his cuteness. Gotcha, bitch. Yeah, not even kidding, you can send him off to distract someone, at which point when their back is turned, you can simply sneak up behind them and give them a machete makeover. And I can't fault this little guy for his dedication either. At one point I was high up in a chopper scouting out a tanker for hostages, and then I noticed he was swimming out in the middle of the ocean trying to catch up to me. And this is for only three of the Amigos, like there's still more to unlock after that. Go there. See if I can. One thing I've never really been all that happy with when it comes to the Far Cry games is the combat. And I've always felt that since Far Cry 3, like nothing's ever really been improved on. You just kind of aim at someone and then press the fire button. And I think that's why I've always enjoyed using the bow so much in these games. Because at least with that weapon, there's at least some kind of element to skill there. With the arrow dropping off over distances and the delay before it hits what you're aiming at. Far Cry 6 seems to be going back to the old fashioned shooting side of things. Just throwing lots of different kinds of guns at the player. A pretty big new addition though is the inclusion of ammo types and enemies actually being more vulnerable to some of these and then more resistant to others. So one of the guys I fought in the preview builds with these guys in biohazard suits, looking like they're about to go off and cook some blue meth with Walter White. And shooting them in their traditional manner wasn't very effective. But because these guys were weaker to fire, hitting them with a flamethrower caused them to pretty much explode instantly. Other enemy soldiers might be weaker to soft target rounds or they might be wearing armor and more vulnerable to armor piercing rounds. So you've got to use all these weapon benches to modify the ammo types for each of your guns. 
about the only thing they're missing with this is that when you pull out a weapon, it doesn't show you what ammo type it's using. So it kind of seems like you got to memorize that for each weapon. And I do think it's a bit silly how you can equip a gun that's got explosive ammo, which is going to shred through a vehicle, but yet for some reason that explosive ammo doesn't do any damage to a human torso. But look, if nothing else, it's a pretty unique system and it's going to make it a bit more skillful than just mindlessly shooting everyone with the same couple of guns. Far Cry 6's other new addition are the Resolver weapons. Now these are handmade guns thrown together with what looks like pieces of scrap metal. But looks can be deceiving because these things can be pretty damn powerful. I actually really like that element to New Dawn, how you were living in a world that's really gone to shit. So all the weapons were literally thrown together with whatever materials people could find. And now again in Far Cry 6, it also makes sense, considering you're stuck in a country that's been suffering from an economic blockade for decades. So to be using a weapon that's being barely held together, it all kind of fits. Now, I'm only limited to talking about what I played within the preview build, and I know there's more of these, but there's only a few of them that I actually played around with. The first one was the flamethrower, which is the first one you get in the campaign anyway, and yeah, no points for guessing how that thing works. And of course it comes with that obligatory mission where you gotta go through a plantation burning everything down while music plays in the background. This time I had to burn down a certain amount of crops and blow up a certain amount of chemical tanks that were full to the brim with G Fuel energy drinks. Thankfully to that, music wasn't Skrillex, so it wasn't making my ears bleed or making me want to kill myself. The song that played during this whole sequence was actually kind of catchy, not to mention it fit the theme and the premise. As for the other Resolver weapons, well, there's one that's kind of like a railgun, I guess, where you charge up a shot and then let it loose. Apart from that, there's a giant ass crossbow that kind of looks like a ballista that someone found in a scrapyard. And this thing's kind of cool too, I guess, though the iron sights aren't all that great to aim through. I think probably my favorite one though is this revolver and shield combo, and this is definitely one of the better ones to mess around with. I'm just such a huge advocate for any high powered hand cannon that can kill an enemy in a single hit. Don't give up! We're close! Throughout the game, you're also carrying the Supremo weapon on your back, which is another powerful ability on cooldown. The first one they give you is like a missile launcher that just shoots out a bunch of heat seekers. Not entirely subtle, but look, it gets the job done if blowing someone the fuck up with a bunch of missiles is what you're going for. There's another one that fires out a large electrical blast in an AoE pattern. Again, not exactly subtle, but still handy for ruining the day of those unfortunate assholes who happen to be standing near you. And then the final one I used was like a jetpack that burns people standing near you. Though I was a bit of an idiot and used this thing indoors, which made me look like Dr. Colossus from that one episode of The Simpsons. <laughs> Overall, I think they've added in enough new toys here that it's going to keep you busy playing around with all of them. And as you'd expect, each weapon and ability has a bunch of upgrades and components you're going to need to find to customize them. It's just that classic Far Cry loop of always having something you can be doing. There's outposts you can take over, there's military checkpoints, which are more or less the same. And there's probably a few hundred collectibles to find along the way, thankfully not feathers or fucking pigeons. And if there's not some kind of mission where my character takes a hallucinatory substance and then trips balls, well, I'd also be really surprised. Normally, I'd be able to comment on the performance as well, but the only thing is, like I said, that I had to play this thing remotely. Which meant I was hooking up to someone else's PC, and the only performance I had to worry about there was my internet speed. I do know they were running it on a 2080 Ti, and with everything maxed out, the game seemed to run pretty smoothly with no real hiccups. Ever since Far Cry 5 though, Ubisoft have really had that optimization side of things pretty well in check, so I don't think that's something that's going to be an issue. My biggest concern here is going to be the microtransactions. So do I. Far Cry New Dawn just had a whole heap of these where you could just outright spend real money on buying resources to use in the game, essentially bypassing having to play the game properly and letting you skip over a sizable chunk of time you'd have to spend collecting all of this crap yourself. It shouldn't matter in a single player game, I mean, look if someone wants to pay money to essentially jump the queue, well that's fine. It's more the fact that simply including something like this is just a red rag to a bull when it comes to the gaming community. And I just feel like when people fixate on something like that, it draws attention away from the other underlying issues that a game has. Issues which aren't related to people choosing to spend money on something that literally only affects themselves. I guess time's gonna tell with this one, but I'm just really hoping they don't take this microtransaction route. You're never satisfied! 
Ubisoft seemed pretty intent lately on running Rainbow Six Siege into the ground, but I think they're doing some pretty cool things here with Far Cry 6, and it is shaping up to be a lot of fun. It's not reinventing the wheel, it's the same Far Cry game we played half a dozen times already, but it does feel like they've got that formula pretty damn tight at this point. It's the right amount of wackiness combined with the darker and more serious undertones of the game's story. You have boys and yada, you have boys and your sword! It's got a charismatic villain, lots of good looking explosions, and some comical characters to interact with along the way, and to be honest, I don't really need much more than that in my Far Cry games. October's also going to see the release of the new Battlefield and Back for Blood, with Far Cry 6 earlier in the month. And out of all these three, the one that has the murderous alligator and the cute little Daxion is definitely looking like it's going to hold its own. <laughs> so I guess I'll see you again in another couple of months, bitch. He's fucking terrifying. <laughs> Come <laughs> on.